and today we're talking with Janine Swa, one of our new venture partners from Miami. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about Janine Swa and her Miami adventures in VC. Oh my gosh. Well, sir, first of all, thank you for having me. You're <laughs> um, so, I mean, Miami is, as you know, it's popping. Like, Miami's popping. However, there are some silos in the ecosystem that just prevent black and brown founders from being great. Mm -hmm. And so the work that I'm doing is aimed toward increasing access to capital for black founders. Um, I am a founder myself, and so I'm working on an ed tech platform that basically translates mainstream information into a voice that learners can understand. And so um, in doing that too, I've also developed an ecosystem of 3,500 founders, and I'm also now a partner, a venture partner with you guys, you know, shaking it up. But then also um, for, I'm a scout for Florida funders. So I like to keep one foot on each side so that I can be in the decision-making rooms on both ends, so. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I remember you telling me about the, uh, the startup and the, the language barriers that happens a lot of times when people are passing this information around. Right. How did you kind of stumble into like, hey man, I'm gonna build something where I can translate this information for any and everybody? Yeah. Well, it's really funny how the world comes full circle. And after our conversation, I was actually thinking about that. I had always told myself that I wanted to have a bilingual immersion school where I'm going to own a language school. And so that had always been in the back of my mind. But after launching my co-working space and incubator in Miami um, in February of 2020, we recently closed it. But with that experience, I learned a lot about the barriers that founders had. And a lot of it had to do with factors of intimidation, like lack of resources, of course, um, lack of network know-how. But I saw that that need of knowledge know-how was really big. And so that I figured was the, it was like a, a stepping stone into increasing access when you increase the knowledge that you know. Yes. And then in factors of intimidation, like a lot of black founders were intimidated by VC talk and by the language around it. And so in putting all of my training in linguistics and everything that I know about like sociology and how society and language interact, that's how I came to, hey, I really want to build this. I've always wanted to have my own language school, um, but doing it in a way that I could actually make like big impact at scale, which is what my incubator co-working space didn't allow me to do. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and wow, you say February 2020. Yes, bro, we launched in the midst of COVID, <laughs> yeah. in the midst of COVID, and we, we were kicking for a while. And so the decision to close was voluntary because again, I wanted to get more into the tech scene and um, my co-founder had also launched a spa, so she wanted to get into the beauty space. So on a financial basis, we were like, it's just not, it's not a sustainable model for us as women, for us as people, and then for us as founders, it's just, it doesn't make sense. So we yeah. closed at the end of April. Oh man, long ride, long ride. And a lot of debt, but hey, that's why we gotta be billionaires because yeah. we just gonna write a little yeah. check at the end. Yeah, it was nothing. It was just a small blip in my past. It really was a blip that opened up a new door. Like I'm here with you guys. Had I not closed the space, I wouldn't have been here. So it's like, I always like to find the silver lining and the silver lining was so evident, but it put me in a position to build community and learn how to do it effectively so that I can now do it on the digital side, like at scale. Yeah. So in regards to the venture partners about to, you know, doing our best to piece together the resources and the capital opportunities that you guys need to get out there and like really kick butt. What are some of those plans you have for that Miami market? Oh my God. So my presentation, y'all, it's not until tomorrow, <laughs> but I'm excited to share it with you. So one of the main, I have two specific, um, initiatives that I want to launch. It's the first one is called We Fund Wednesdays. So as I said, I'm a scout for Florida funders. I'm now a venture slash city partner for you guys. And then I'm also a member at WeWork and WeWork loves my content because I post like all the time. Awesome. Um, so it's We Fund Wednesdays where it's an ecosystem building, community building tactic every Wednesday. And I'm going to be connecting the stakeholders that need to get connected to get founders funded. Yeah. So I want to have a very like strategic um, like sticker. Like let's cut through the bullshit basically. I need funding yeah. or I have funding. Yeah. So it's like when you walk into the room, you already know what you're there for, but then you foster that environment of like allowing people to exchange information which will eventually lead to some type of investment and so going to 
partner and bring that partnership with WeWork, with WeFunder, and then Florida Funders, and then of course bring in the people in the ecosystem who are in the VC space, in the crowdfunding space, who are founders. I mean, just putting the right stakeholders in the room. Yeah. Did you always start uh, from a perspective of pushing your own content, or is that something that you got into later on and realizing that this could be a really good tool for yeah. scaling the message? Well, people have always told me that they've liked my energy, and I've always been afraid of it because I knew that it could be powerful one day, but I didn't want to be like in front of everybody. And so that was something in building my first concept, Think Global, which is the incubator slash co-working space, through developing content there I realized how much people really wanted it and then that's when I did some like self-reflecting and thought about it from the linguistic perspective and I was like I know how to translate this information and so I started doing it and now it's just the people love it so now I'm like just kind of accepting that power within myself and allowing myself to share it with other people yeah that's usually always the uh the fork in the road with yeah. it where you tell folks <laughs> like you have to step out there you have to put yourself forward and like i don't think yeah. folks will want it and you're really only thinking about those people that won't get it and the people that will criticize so true. but even the very even if it's a few you can do so much with these uh these small numbers by giving them the greatest experience creating those opportunities because that will multiply when they run tell that and then she'll come back with more people like, hey, so help true. my friend it's or so help true. my partner. And today, honestly, I was going to tell Adi this, but I I mean, my goal is to raise 1.1 mil. And so I'd already been in talks with investors and like everybody's like, OK, well, once you have the MVP, I'm like, I kind of already do. But um, in talking about the platform and the community and the people who actually engage with the content and support you. I had like a come to Jesus moment when we were downstairs talking and I was like, dude, I could totally do this on WeFunder. And then it built into the story of me coming in as a city partner. And then it helps to inspire other founders to be like, you can literally do this. You don't have to have the barriers of an investor all the time, you know, it depends on the investor. But it was just like a really cool realization that the value of community yes. and the ability to raise money from people who actually engage with your content from day one. Which is where a lot of people get lost at because you go straight to the, and not the knock VCs right, or anything no, like that. But um, I'm an aspiring VC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I used to have this, I used to have this homie. Um, dang, it's probably going to know I'm talking about him. But I used to have this homie. And yeah, like he had this, this crazy email list. But every time we talked about like going ahead, it was like, oh man, how do we get in this publication? How do we do this? How do we expand the brand? Mm. It's like, man, it's a thousand people here. That you have never spoken to, never sent any type of correspondence. Anything you're looking for, capital, resource, network, it's probably right here in this book. If we just, you know, look at the people around us more and understand that value that we have generated from just being ourselves and showing so up consistently, oh it's a lot of times it's all we'll need. And anything else that you think you would, that you need will eventually work its way over there. That's so true. And I learned that. So when I was just telling you now that I cut my hair yeah. and the day after I cut my hair, I made like a personal decision. I'd always known that if I show people a side of me that they had never seen, cause I'm always like, ah, yeah. but if they were able to see like me in a vulnerable state, I knew that that would do two things. One, it would allow people to trust me more as a businesswoman, And then two, it would allow people to just trust me more as a person because I'm showing you like, what's actually going on. So long story short, I ended up sharing the story and it propelled like everything forward. And so that was a really cool moment for me to see what being yourself actually does and doing it unapologetically. Yes. Because the people who saw that video are now, I mean, becoming an advocate for me and giving me opportunities just because I showed who I really was, so. That feels like the perfect way to conclude Please let the people know where to find you, how they can support all those different things. Of course. So you can find me at jea 9 suah on Instagram. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, so you can find me on LinkedIn. And then when I launch my campaign on WeFunder, you'll, you can find me there too. You can find me. <laughs> Everyone, that is Janine Swa. Say it correctly. Swa. The same in the same manner. Yes. Thank you very much for your time and your presence. Thank you very much for all the work that you're going to do moving forward.